Peace, love, and happiness, beautiful people. You are tuned in to another episode of Real Estate with B podcast with your gracious host, moi, Oya Biyi Ajinaku. Everybody calls me B. And Real Estate with B pretty much goes over industry topics to help get you into your new home and who knows, maybe even invest one day. But first, if you are new to the channel, I need you to do a few things. I need you to hit the like, subscribe, and the share button because it's imperative that we get this information out to everyone that you love or that you just cool with because I just believe that everyone deserves home ownership. All right, so today we have a really great episode for you guys. Um, we are gonna talk about the key players in real estate. Now, I know a lot of people know about the attorney and the realtor and the lender, but there's a lot of moving parts into real estate. And the next episode, we'll talk about the actual uh, um, process of home search, going under contract and closing. Um, but today, uh, like I said, we're going to talk about the key players in real estate. So the key players in real estate are... Dun, dun, dun. Now, <laughs> the key player in real estate are your realtor, your attorney, your lender, but then you have your appraiser, your inspectors. What does each person do? That's what we're going to discuss. We're going to discuss the roles of each player because it's imperative. I don't know if you guys watch sports or anything like that, and it's okay if you don't, um, but it's imperative that your squad is built correctly because that is going to determine the race that you get and the keys that you get. <laughs> if not, um, you will find yourself lacking in a lot of areas if you don't have a solid, strong team. So I like to say that the realtor is the cornerstone of every transaction, whether you believe it or not. Um, and it's kind of sucks because we're usually the first to get cut out of a deal as well. Don't understand that. Um, but the realtor is very important because not only are they the person showing you homes, but a good realtor. Um, has an eye for the home. The good realtor is going to be able to distinguish things um, that may need to be talked about during the negotiation process, um, things that you can negotiate with, such as a leak, um, may not be active, but remnants of it. Um, I know I just came from a property today and we saw lines along the baseboards that indicate that that uh, property has flooded before. Um, and I mentioned that and gas smells and such like that. So a good realtor is gonna use all of their senses to help you justify if this home is worth moving forward with or not. They're not just the person that opens up the lockbox and turns the key and opens up the door. I know a lot of people think that about realtors. Okay, let's just be honest, that's a, that's a lot of realtors. But <laughs> that's why it's really good that you um, vouch or not vouch, but you uh, vet your realtor because not everyone is created equal. But yeah, so the realtor is going to go in with all of their senses and be keen and be aware if this is a good solid property for you. They're going to know the different neighborhoods and so forth. What's what's in this neighborhood, the different school districts, how to get into these different schools. Um, if you have anything like Chicago where you have magnet schools and so forth like that, they're going to know. Um, the different aldermans a lot of times as well. Um, they're gonna know, whew, they're gonna know pretty much a lot of different things. A good realtor is also gonna know the different um, grants that you can apply for within your city limits and different credits that you can get after you move in. That's what a good realtor is built out of. Um, a lot of realtors also have a very deep Rolodex. And what I mean by that is a good one networks a lot. A good realtor is going to know a lot of different people to help you uh, navigate the transaction. So if you don't have an attorney, a good realtor is going to have their attorney. Um, a couple attorneys that they can refer to you. They're going to have a, a couple inspectors that they can refer to you. A good realtor is going to have all of these different tools for you um, to pull out of the hat to get you into your new home. So it's really imperative that you vet your realtor, that you go and ask different people that they've worked with to see how they are, because it's not just about the gifts that you get at the end of the day. It's about what your realtor knows to help you save money or even make it an investment property further on down the line. Also knows how to write up a contract very well for you. And they can do that expeditiously for you. Um, they're gonna work with your schedule. 
to see when you're available to go out. And they should be present with you when looking at these properties, not just sending you out to your, by yourself to go to open houses and so forth. Now, granted, they may have a couple clients that they're working with at the same time. So you may go to one or two open houses by yourself. However, and a lot of realtors don't like to waste their time if you don't have a pre-approval or if you don't know what you're looking for, just because time is money for a realtor. Like we don't get paid until the deal actually closes. So every time you're like, no, not this one, let's keep looking and let's keep going for all of these mileages and uh, gas and everything like that. You gotta understand like, we don't get paid until you get the house, until you get the keys in your hand and you move in. So we, a lot of times like to screen people just to make sure that they're serious because it is a lot of people that will waste your time, but um, they will go to the properties with you. Mostly so they can see what's going on in the property as well. Um, and they can see your reactions to different things to, to help narrow down the search even more. to something that may be more palatable, palatable, palatable for you. Something more of your taste. How about that? We put you in connection with the attorneys if you don't have one, because a lot of people have family attorneys that they work with that do real estate. It is crucial to have an attorney that does real estate. Not every attorney is created equal. A lot of attorneys seem to like to go on vacation as well. So you want to make sure that they're accessible when they are gone, because you have a period in a contract, what is called attorney review. And with this, the attorney pretty much goes over the title, um, making sure uh, the title, the taxes, they, they go through everything with a fine tooth comb to see if they need to uh, stop this deal from escalating any further. And that's pretty much what it is. Attorney review, they do their due diligence after you've done your due, di due diligence to see if they need to kill this transaction. That's what they do. Or they move it forward. Um, a lot of times they move it forward, but, uh, your attorney, they're very crucial and they usually get paid at the end of the, the, at the transaction as well. Um, good attorneys, man, good attorneys are very responsive. That's first and foremost. Like you don't have to worry about if paperwork went across their desk, they're responding to it. And if they're not responding to it, they have a team that responds to it for you. So I know a lot of the attorneys that I work with, they have transaction coordinators or, um, paralegals transactions coordinators that help go through the process from start to finish. So they'll reach out about the taxes, get in the title. Um, they'll reach out about any commitments, the HUD statements, um, inspections, doing negotiations back and forth. Because once the contract is submitted to the attorneys, it's pretty much now in their hands. Your realtor is just there saying like, hey, make sure we, we're paying attention to this and paying attention to that and that everything gets to the closing table. Um, for the most part, but yes, a good realtor, a good realtor, a good attorney is going to be very responsive. A good attorney is going to look out for you. They're going to make sure they have your back. The reason why I'm saying that is like, for example, I had a transaction a year ago where the attorneys, they didn't want to move forward with the transaction, even though the investor wanted this particular property. Reason being is that they found long, long time ago that there was red tape around this property in terms of the housing court. So they wanted the other side to clear that before they even went to the next phase. And the other side, they didn't want to really clear it. So the attorney that the investor had, they kept going back and forth. If you don't clear this, we're just going to cancel the contract. And the investor did not want to do that. He wanted the property so bad, but he ended up listening to his real, uh, his attorney because this attorney was an, uh, investor friendly attorney. So you definitely want a real estate attorney that not only, um, you want a real estate attorney, not only gets your goals, but they also understand the totality of real estate, especially in what you're trying to do. So if it's just purchasing a home, then they specialize in purchasing, uh, helping you get your home secured. Um, then if they are investor friendly, they're, they're going to know all the different um, hoops that you have to jump through with the buildings courts and so forth, demo courts and um, housing courts, like all of these different things. They're going to know those things and who to talk to in the city. I know I had one transaction where the attorney knew which alderman to go to and 
emailed them directly and started a whole conversation. And next thing you know, we were, we were up for review. So <laughs> it was really amazing. So you want a really solid, good attorney that can go and bat for you. Not anyone who's just always on vacation. No shade. I mean, live your best life. Not anyone who um, is slow to respond. Not anyone who mm, doesn't get the transaction or what's going on and they miss a lot of steps. You don't want those. You want to you want to fire those and you want to hire another attorney because there have been times where attorneys will get swapped out in the middle of a deal just because the the buyer or the seller isn't comfortable with how things are, are going because they want the property and they, they know it's a solid property. Um, so I've seen that lots of time, actually, lots of times, actually moving right along. Uh, the next person that is very crucial to the deal is your lender. OK, not all lenders are created equal. Some lenders don't even know what products they offer. Some lenders don't even communicate that you are eligible for certain grants and such. I've gone through a lot of bad lenders to the to get to the lenders that I have now. Let's just say that. So I've seen a lot of things happen. Um, Lenders are very crucial because they are the ones who's going to write out and underwrite. Their team is going to underwrite your transaction um, to get you to home. They're going to pretty much pay for the home for you, if you think about it, because they're they're giving you the loan to purchase the home and you're just going to pay your lender back. So a lender is very crucial. Uh, a good lender is very responsive. And, I, and I, here's the thing. Real estate is very go with the flow in terms of like, keep responding to keep the ball moving forward. That's what I mean with that. If somebody stops communicating, the deal starts to fall apart and it starts to go into limbo. Nobody wants the deal to go into limbo because look, you're trying to move or you're trying to, you know, renovate this property. You're trying to, um, get your, your kids in a school district before, you know, the new school year starts. Like it's so many different things and so many different people has these different goals that you want to make sure that everybody on your team is keeping a ball moving forward. I've seen lenders who have stopped communicating in the middle of transactions. I've seen attorneys get on lenders because of that. Realtors get on lenders because, because of that. So you want to make sure your lender is responsive. And I know I'm going to say that about everybody in real estate, but if they're not communicating, even you as the buyer or seller, if you're not communicating, you will halt the process and that that's no fun for anybody. So yes, your lender has to be very, very responsive. They have to be able to answer your questions when you have them. And even if you don't have them and be able to explain the process to you, because it is a very, very tedious process, especially with the different documents that you are submitting. Not only is it just taxes and bank statements, but you're you're submitting all of these different things to, to for them to take this information to give to the underwriting department so that they can start writing out this loan. Right. So if your lender isn't communicating with you, then you you're just pretty much lost in the wind. And that's not good for anybody. And I've seen lots of people change lenders in the middle of the transaction because of that. Not only does your lender have to be very responsive in answering your questions or anybody's questions and, and updating everybody on, along the way of the transactions, but they also have to be aware of what you qualify for. I know that sounds really silly to say, but I've seen it. I wouldn't be saying if I haven't seen it. <laughs> they have to know what you qualify for and how you can, and if you want it, how you can qualify for it. For example, there are a lot of grants that are very uh, DTI sensitive and DTI means your debt to income ratio. So there are a lot of grants that are DTI sensitive. There are grants that only apply to two units that versus having a single family home. There are grants that are special for first responders. There are grants that are special for doctors. There, there are so many different grants, like hundreds of grants out there that can be applied to a loan during the underwriting process to help get you some money off. Um, if not a, a, a good percentage. Um, in terms of interest rates is what I mean. Um, a good lender is going to know all of that thing, those things. A good lender is going to walk you through and say, hey, you're this far off from this DTI. Let's pay this off so that we can be in this threshold and we can get you for the, this grants. Because guess what? Everybody loves free money. And a lender's job is to give you a little bit of that if you qualify for it so that you can close. Makes them look good, right? 
Um, yes, yeah, so your lender should know the different grants that you qualify for and how you can qualify for them. For example, I had one lender that was working with my mom and he just, I felt like he dropped the ball. Stop communicating. He was just like, oh yeah, the team would get to it. The team would get to it. And it's like, we need answers now because we're looking. So switched her over to another lender and they were very responsive. They had 50 million people that you had to talk to, but it was okay. Um, you will run into lenders like that, that have a massive team that you have to talk to different people in the different stages. So with the second lender though, they were able to point out like, hey, if you do this, that, and the other, we can get you this grant and then you can get a two unit because that was the goal to get a two unit. But we really wanted a three unit, right? But then they said, hey, that grant wouldn't qualify for the three unit. We don't have any grants that qualify for the three units at this moment. Fair enough, still FHA. So we started working on getting our DTIs together as well as searching for a particular two units um, with a little basement and that you know you can do a little something with later because in Chicago, we have different programs that you can um, renovate or build additions to your properties. So we went through all of that and we wouldn't have known some of these things if we hadn't talked to this particular lender. With another lender, he was able to help me navigate different types of loans for my client who was looking to get an investment property for building um, income. So there's so many different things that a lender is supposed to be a guide in showing you. They have to be the Merlin of the money, come on. If they're not, then all is lost and you pretty much got a bad loan that just got sold and you're stuck until you refinance. Um, there are some lenders that only care about the refinance. There are some lenders that only care about just getting you through the process for the numbers. You don't want those. You want someone who actually cares about what you and your family is trying to do. And you can hear it in the sincerity of how they talk. Um, and we do have lenders tables. So if you're ever interested in checking out some of these lenders that can help you get uh, loans through whatever state you're in, you have to check with them, but they can help you in many cases, uh, especially if you're here in the Chicagoland area or looking to purchase in the Chicagoland area. We do have the lenders table. Shameless plug for real estate would be. Next, we have inspectors. I love inspectors. Inspectors let you know what discounts you can get with your property. That's what I like to think of it. So you can negotiate a lot of different things for seller's credits and seller's credits are pretty much what the seller get money that the seller gives for closing costs or sometimes to go towards particular renovations if they do not feel the need or feel like they can get it done in time for closing. So we have inspectors to help us with this process. Let me tell you a story on why you need inspectors, okay? I had a client, well, I have a client with a building now because I do property management as well. So I have a client who did not use a realtor, did not get an inspection, um, and didn't do a lot of multiple tool of things that you would think you would do in purchasing. They didn't do it, but they got this nice building that they can rent out. The problem was that the building looked nice on the surface. So winter comes and we start having all of these different problems when it comes to the plumbing. And we're trying to figure out, well, did you get an inspection? And they didn't, they did not get an inspection. So we found that we have the improper pipes, we have no insulation. We have this socket gone, that window broken. Like we have so many different things that we have to fix throughout the period of this building so that it can remain habitable and efficient. Efficient is really the most important thing because it is habitable, but it, efficiency is not. So that's what an inspector does. A good inspector is going to take their time in your property. If they in and out, that's a problem. Red flag. Don't don't pay them. <laughs> Tell them they need to get their butts back in there and look at this property some more. <laughs> I know they grown, they can do what they want. But if they are in and out, that is a red flag. 
So you want a good inspector that's going to take their time with your property. They're going to look at every corner, every window they're trekking, every socket. Um, they're turning on the waters and the faucets and such from the top to the bottom, just running the water throughout the process just to even see if there are any drips or anything. Because here's the thing. I have an inspector. He does that. So the waters were all turned down in the house. And by the time we got to the basement, we started seeing water pooling and we're like hey um why is the water doing this mm -mm, that's not good and we ended up canceling that transaction because the the homeowner was you know they were worried because that would have been a lot of stuff and water damage and everything like it was too many different red flags with that that was supposed to be renovated that's why you need to inspect the people because renovated don't always mean renovated as well so the inspector is going to check all of those different things and what they're going to do at the end of it is they're going to pull up write up a report for you with pictures of everything that they've seen and then hand that in to you and you pay them. Pretty much that's how it goes. But what's imperative is if you go to the inspection with them, when you go with them, you can then see what they see and they can explain it to you at that point. As a homeowner, you want to be aware of your home and what you're about to live in and what you're about to put your money down in. Because if you think about it, this is a very huge purchase. This is not something that you want to take lightly, whether it's property for income or a property just for your family to live in. There have been times even I've known other people where there have been times when they'll move into a property and then come winter, they find it is so cold and their heat bill is so high because they don't have any insulation in the upstairs when they were told that it was insulation, but not from the inspector, but from um, the, the sellers. You really want a good inspector because they're going to actually show you what's wrong with the property and they have to. You want them to. They go to class for this. They get licensed for it to show you and they put their license on the line for it as well. Um, so, yeah. So inspections is important. Now, I do want to break inspectors down. You can get an electrical inspector. I don't really see people doing that too often because either the lights are on or they're not. And inspectors are are general inspectors where they touch upon everything pretty much. But one thing in particular especially if you're in an older city, plumbing inspections. Plumbing inspections, I feel, are very crucial in Chicagoland area just because we are on an older plumbing system and they are in the process of taking up the old and putting down the new. Well, your block may still have some old on it. You won't really know what's going on with the plumbing system until you get a plumbing inspection. And a plumbing inspection is very imperative just because they can use or should use a actual scope that will go down into the pipes, the sewer lines and everything to make sure that your uh, line is flushing out correctly as it's supposed to or that there are no breakages in it and that, yeah, that the city is that is hooked up to the city properly. If it is not, you will find a lot of backup issues if your uh catch basin isn't clean because i know in chicagoland area they are getting a lot of rid of a lot of catch basins you don't really need them um per new code um, from what plumbers were telling me but even if that if you do have one on site and that isn't like properly draining and cleaned out that will back up into the home um, even if your home isn't flushing out the fluids that is supposed to flush out properly. Um, and so the city, the grand sewer line, it, it will cause problems. So you'll have a lot of backups in the homes. I know one of the properties that we had, um, as property managers, we did, they didn't get a, a, a plumbing inspection. And what it ended up happening was we ended up having to redo the whole basement floor because of it. Uh, we scoped it eventually and found that we had a broken pipe so we had to actually get a permit get that fixed um later on down the line but that caused a lot of inconvenience for the tenant and so much to where they were like hey we want to move we don't even want to stay here anymore and i don't blame them because they had backup of water and stuff like that it, it was just a nasty situation but had we had gotten i was a realtor 
We ain't gonna talk about that though. But had we had gotten the plumbing inspection, that would have alleviated a lot of those things. And what had happened is, let's say your plumbing inspection report comes back a little negative or whatever, you can ask for seller's credits to get that fixed because you know that it's something that you have to do later on down the line. Now, it may not some, be something that you want to halt your whole deal just because it takes time to get permits and get things fixed, but you can ask for some credits to help get that fixed later on down the line. So that is very imperative. Then another type of inspector that you want is a roof inspection or what they like to say, getting your roof certified. The reason being is a lot of people's like, oh yeah, my roof is new. And you're like, but how, how much? And so they can't really tell you. The roof and inspector can go up there and let you know when that roof was put on and how much longer you have and what areas are problem areas. I know I have one great guy, he was up there and he was telling us like, hey, whoever did the tar up here and did the flat roof did a really amazing job. You guys have about seven more years left on it, yada, yada, yada. So we have had situations where it was like, no, this is not a new roof and they're gonna have to replace this section and so forth. And guess what? A roof is, I know I keep saying crucial, it's crucial just because it is the top layer of the home and with rain getting in, once water gets in and it starts trickling, it starts causing a lot of damages, especially um, starting to produce mold. So you do want to get a roof inspection for your property as well and get it certified. Reason being, once it's certified, then you know you have this much longer on a roof and you can, you know what, save and put money to the side for things that you need to do in the future. That's not even just with the roof, but even with the plumbing and, and so forth. You can save up for these different things if you can get a nice little timeline on it. Um, HVAC can be determined by a regular general inspector. Um, but if you want like the lines and, you know, the vents and everything inspected and so forth, you can get an HVAC inspector out there and they can let you know um, if your house is properly vented and so forth. I've seen that as well um, during the renovation process. But those are pretty much the major inspections that you want to get on your property and the ones that you want to tag in. Now, I know a lot of people do not do this just because they want to cut corners. And let's be honest, cutting corners end up getting you a nice bill in the long run. And that's not something that we want to really do when we're doing a big purchase like this. Go ahead and pay the money up front. Understand what horrors may be down the line. And guess what? Have a plan that you can execute to fix it so that it doesn't come and just jump out at you like, hey, how's it going? You got to fix me now. No, no, let's calm down. I'm, I'm going to get to you when I get to you because I have a plan versus surprise you don't want the surprise look on your face when you're moving your family in that's not a good situation to be in but those are the major inspections that you want to look at moving right along we have appraisers appraisers <laughs> they're fun Let's just say that they're fun. Very nice guys though. Usually guys, I haven't seen too many women appraisers, which, you know, they are pushing for that in the field actually. So if you're looking for a career option, I would encourage you to be an appraiser because they make a lot of money, to be, believe it or not, just to come out for a couple hours. Um, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Um, appraisers are another big player um, that is not necessarily on your team. They'll be on the lenders side, like the lenders queue, and everything, but not talking directly with the lenders. There is a veil that has to be between the lenders and the realtors and the appraisers just because there was a lot of convoluting going on back in 08 and that caused the bubble to happen because people were just appraising like crazy. Because of 08 though, you will see them be very, very cautious now because they're, they were the first point of the finger um, when the, uh, housing crash of 08 happened. So appraisers, what they do is they come out and they appraise the property. Appraise mean they value the property. They evaluate the property and give you a value estimate. The appraisal was always an opinion. Just be aware of that. They are taking, um, the most recent sales within the given radius. Many times it's a half mile radius and it is the same or similar type of property. There are a lot of arguments going on how 
different communities, especially communities of color, are very devalued by appraisers versus other communities. That is a topic that I will leave for off the table or for another discussion at another time when we bring on an appraiser to talk with them about that. How about that? Um, but yes, so they come out and they evaluate the property and give you a value based on a radius of properties that have been sold in the recent er in the area recently, as well as similar properties. If they cannot find it, that's when they start doing a lot of math. <laughs> A lot, like it gets tedious. I've done broker price opinions before, which is similar to appraisers. And you may see a BPO, a broker price opinion, um, coming through for your lender. Cause sometimes lenders get both or use one or the other. Um, but the appraisal is what is going to last on file, especially for different type of loans. So that is crucial is not so much to say because you can't influence them they are separate for that reason so they're not influenced to convolute anything and they should not be taken too lightly because their opinions matter but at the same time it gets tricky with appraisers and that's coming from a realtor who works with a lot with investors as well and we saw a lot of deals go south just because they they devalued the neighborhood and so forth. But like I said, that's just an opinion. That's my opinion as well, because I've seen things sell for what I said that they was going to sell for. But I should have got my appraiser's license for that. Right. <laughs> so we're going to leave it at that. But yes, appraisers, they go out and they value the property and they give that valuation to the lender. And the lender then uses that for underwriting to make sure that they give you um, the proper loan package or even if they want to put their money behind this house. Because if it's not worth it, the lender is not going to lend for it, period. So the next group of people that I want to talk about with you are contractors. They're nice to have on your team. Reason being, even if you're, your realtor is going to know some contract, at least a good realtor is going to know some contractors that they can refer to you um, and you go ahead and vet them out and so forth and go ahead and move forward with them. But let's say that you're moving into a house that is a fixer upper, or let's say that um, you're, I've had people even bring out contractors for inspections as well, just to start the negotiation process um, faster. But let's say that you are looking to get a fixer up or let's say that you get this home that you is move in ready for the most part. But it's the little things here and there that you would like done. A contractor is great to have on your team for that. A general contractor is someone who is able to do or put together a team to do many different things such as electrical plumbing and so forth. Um, I see them mostly coming from the union and then starting their own businesses later on down the line, or they're usually like family owned businesses that have been in existence forever in your neighborhood and you just didn't know it. But contractors are good to have on your team because if you do want something fixed, you can actually bring them in, get some estimates, um, and then have that as a part of your seller's credits too, if you want to asking for seller's credits, should I say, if you want to, sometimes it's not really like, no, nah, we're not doing that. Cause they're going to go based off the inspection report and what the attorney and review and um, what your realtors are negotiating for you. But it is good to know what things are going to cost approximately at least just so that you have an idea of how much you're going to spend after you move into your new home or even if you move into your new home right away. So having a good and uh, not inspector, having a good contractor on your team is crucial. Uh, they will get you in contact with electricians if you need them, roofers, uh, plumbers, um, so forth, just ex just etc. They will get you in contact with all of those. So if you are looking to do a fixer upper, bring them along with you when you're viewing your properties, because what they're going to do is they're going to see automatically of what they need to do and how much it's going to cost. And then they can let you know as you're submitting your offer, because that can be a point too where you can save some money is when you make your initial offering. And if you're an investor friendly, uh, if you're an investor, then you definitely want, your want to have your contractors coming out with you to the properties because they'll let you know if you even are wasting your time because it's going to be too much work and not, you know, not going to give you the return that you're looking at. So you want to have a contractor on your team for those reasons there. Your title company. Let's not forget them. But 
No, title companies aren't created equal. I won't say that. So, all right. So the title company is going to show you, is going to uh, do all the research for you. You've already done your due diligence. They're going to go in and they're going to do even more due diligence. They're going to find out who owned the property before the person owned the property before the owned the person owned the property. <laughs> and that's imperative because with that process, you can actually find some things like, nope, cloud on title. Somebody's saying that they own it when they're not supposed to own it. Or there's a housing court situation that didn't show up um, on the city records online. So they were able to see that through the, the back end. So title companies are very imperative with that. Not only that is, let's say that you are doing any construction for a property. They actually have title companies that will hold the money for you in what's called an escrow. Um, and it, sometimes you'll see hey, we want to close, but there are things that are outstanding, like a water bill, for example. I know I've had that on several transactions. So what they will, what the seller will do is they'll put a sum of money aside and they'll put it in escrow so that when the water title does come back, the water commitment does come back, then they will um, pull that money from that escrow and then pay out the rest of it to the owner if there is anything that is to be paid out. If not, then the owner has to pay more into it. So Title companies are good for situations like that. They are third party neutral, meaning they don't really care if you close. They do because they want to get paid soon, but they don't really care if you close because they want to make sure it's proper. Let's just say it like that. So if two people get in a spat, at the at the end of the day, they can sit in different rooms and close with the diff, with the different representatives at the title company. Um, they can make sure that things are put in escrow as they're supposed to. They can make sure title is cleared like it's supposed to, and then issue all of those things to the final HUD statement and to the, get all these closing documents together for signature. That is the job and the function of a title company. Attorneys are going to choose the title company generally. Um, a lot of them, you know, have different incentives that you can you know get out of those relationships but yes they're going to be with the attorneys and your realtors are going to have uh, relationships with them as well you'll see a lot of like off pocket deals sometimes go through title companies like if you don't have an attorney you can go through a title company is what i'm saying but you have to check with your state laws because not every state allows that and not every title company allows that either but yes, they will allow people to close without attorneys because that's how third party a title company is. So when you close, though, let's say that something comes up on the property that nobody caught during inspections or that nobody caught during what I'm saying, during attorney review or getting the title together. Well, the title company is going to issue what's called title insurance. That title insurance is actually going to cover you some for their mistake. Because essentially, if you're doing the research and you didn't catch it, that's on you, right? So they own up to that many times. And they'll actually have money set aside to where they can cover that cost for you if it is something that is uh, costly. So that's what a title company does. They're going to go through the property with a fine cool tone, comb in terms of paperwork in order to make sure that the property is owned by who it says is owned by and that the property is able to be sold and cleared by any taxes situation that may be going on on a local or, gov or federal level. And they're going to let you know um, if we cannot move forward with this title. That's happened before as well. But they also can have the escrow situation going on for you as well. So a title company is also imperative to have on the team. If you do not have one, someone can refer one to you. <laughs> I didn't need to do the shimmy, but I wanted to. So I think that's the episode for you guys today. That is the key players in real estate. You have your realtor, which is moi, in Chicagoland area. You have your... <laughs> I love doing that. So by the way, you have your realtor, you have your attorney, you have your lender, you have your uh, appraiser, you have your inspectors, you have your contractors and you have your title companies. Then you have all your local governments and all this stuff like that. But that's neither here nor there. That's when you start getting into development, which we'll get into that way down the line. First, let's get you in your, first, your new home. Uh, but that is all that I have for you today. If you found any value in this at all, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and the share button. Um, it's imperative to get this information out to as many people as possible for you and your loved ones. 
um, that's what I'm doing it for because I believe everybody deserves home ownership um, even when they come out the gate get the baby a property put it in a trust or something we'll talk about that later <laughs> but that is all that I have for you today. Um, thank you for tuning in to another wonderful episode of Real Estate with B. If you liked what you see, hit the thumbs up. Peace.